All right, here we go. Hey everyone, all right, today we are going to apply an isolation coat to an acrylic painting. Now, an isolation coat sits on a layer between your paint layer and your varnish. And what it does is it kind of provides some protection to the painting before you varnish it. It allows you to have like a really even sheen before you apply the varnish. And if your varnish is removable, uh, you can later remove that varnish and reapply it in case it, you know, it starts to yellow or something like that while still protecting the paint underneath it. Now the painting we're going to be applying this to today is my newest Nightmare Before Christmas painting for Disney Fine Art. It's called The Forest. It's a uh, 24 by 24 painting on hardboard and it's about an eighth of an inch thick. And this board is called Gesso Board from a company called Ampersand Art Supply. All right, so the isolation coat product we're gonna be using is this product from Golden. It's their own isolation coat mixture. You can make your own by mixing some other gel mediums with water, but I like this product because it's already ready to go and it just needs to be poured onto the painting. All right, with all that out of the way, let's head on over to the table and get going. All right, so we've got the artwork down here. And the first thing I want to point out is I have it elevated a little bit on the saddle box. And the reason being is as I apply that isolation coat, I don't want it to roll over the edges underneath and just kind of stick to the surface. Next thing you're going to want to do is make sure the top of the painting is clean. There's no dust or anything you can see sitting on top. As I mentioned earlier, here's the isolation coat product from Golden Paints that we'll be using. For a brush, I like to use these edge brushes that you'd find at Lowe's or Home Depot. I just find it gives me the, the smoothest finish and the most control, but whatever you know, smooth brush works for you, feel free to try. Just make sure that the brush you use is specifically for the purpose of applying an isolation coat. Never use it to apply varnish or any other material to the surface. So the idea here is to work quickly. I'm going to pour some in the middle and start to spread it around. Ideally, I only wanna go over a certain area two, maybe three times tops, and then just let it sit and dry. I have light off to the left, and this is gonna really help later as I'm trying to make sure I've covered the entire area. You can kind of get close to the artwork and look at the reflection and make sure you've covered every, every piece of the artwork with the isolation coat. All right, here we go. So I'm kind of doing a quick pass over the whole area in general first, and then I'll go back to make sure that I have the lines uh, the way I'd like. Okay, I have coverage over the whole area at this point, so now I'm gonna go through and make some nice lines across. I see some kind of uh, collecting up here on this one side, so I'm just going to go back the other way once. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, it can be tempting to go back and try to hit these areas that you think might need a little bit more refinement, but really you risk kind of really making a, a big mistake with that because isolation coat, you know, it, it tends to, this product tends to set really quickly. This is where that light comes in helpful. I can kind of get down close to the painting and kind of examine it and make sure I have coverage over every, every part of it. And now it's time for this to dry. I usually let it sit overnight uh, before I get to the varnish part. You might see this, what looks like a milky look to, uh, to the isolation coat. And trust me, that's completely normal. It kind of freaks you out at first, but uh, pretty quickly this, this material will start to dry clear. All right, it's uh, 24 hours later, everything is done. And the first thing you're gonna notice probably is this really strong gloss finish. Uh, this is a characteristic of isolation coats to have this really shiny surface. And uh, the way to actually bring that down later is to use a matte varnish, which will kind of dial down some of that, that shininess. And uh, that's what I'll be doing later. All right, I like to put down isolation coats for all of my paintings. I think it provides a great layer of protection and I hope you consider it for your paintings as well. Of course, all paintings really start with that first layer of gesso. To learn a little bit more about how I apply gesso and why you might want to consider adding more layers of gesso before you start painting, check out this video next. Take care.